Alright, what's up guys? Um, this is Doug from Undead Nation, and I'm going to be bringing you my Mech Knight, my Mech Knight Invoke deck profile. Whoa, don't know what happened there. So, um, <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and just hop right into this. Um, we're going to start this deck profile off with uh, three copies of our Mech Knight Purple Nightfall. Um, this guy right here is whenever he is, you can special summon him to a zone that has two or more cards pointing to it, and then you could target one of your Mech Knight monsters and banish it, banish this card until the end of the the uh, the end of your next standby phase, and then you can add a Mech Knight monster from your deck to your hand. But other than Mech Knight Purple Nightfall, um, he's uh, one of the better cards. Um, he's all right to open up with if you go second, um, but you never really want to see any of your Mech Knight monsters in your in your um, hand if you're going first depending on how your hand is because you do need two cards in your column to get most of the, to get them all out onto the field so it's just better to have um, this is more of a go second variant for it um, next up we're gonna be running another card that requires cards in a column but it's very good for this build uh, iron dragon tomaton um, this card is simply amazing for the mech knights uh, um, with him you can uh, special summon him to a zone that a with three or more cards in into it um, and then when he is special summoned you can just knock out that zone and destroy all cards in, a col in that column besides this card um, that zone is also unusable f while he remains on the board um, he is just really good for this deck just because of the fact that this build abuses columns with the mech knights. Um, I, if you're going to run him, I would run, especially with this build, I would run him in a playset. Nothing less because, yeah, he's just way too good for this deck. Um, next up, uh, we're running our staples of tr uh, Triple Ash Blossom. Um, not really much more to say about that just because it's Ash Blossom and it's pretty much a staple anymore for decks nowadays to use. Um, so yeah, we we run that kind of playset for uh, our hand traps. Um, our two ofs now, we run one of the better Mech Knight monsters in my opinion is uh, Mech Knight Blue Sky. Um, when he's special summoned to a zone that has two or more cards in its column, um, you can add up to that many Mech Knight monsters from your deck to your hand depending on how many cards are in your opponent's column. So if there's three cards in your opponent's column, you can add up to three Mech Knight monsters with different names from your deck. Um, but it's just a lot better to uh, use his effect to add just, you know, one, two, I wouldn't really add that many Mech Knight monsters into your hand just because you don't want to see all your Mech Knights in your hand. You want to have them in your deck, especially if you're running some of the Mech Knight support cards. Um, and since this is an Invoke deck, I'm running double copies of Alistair the Invoker. He's the only normal summon of the deck, and he is the best summon of the deck for the, for this build just because whenever he is brought out, you can um, add one Invocation from your deck to your hand, and then... Um, he, whenever you use Invocation as Fusion Summon, he gets banished from your field. Uh, he can get recurred back from the banished pile by dropping your Invocation, or putting your Invocation back into your deck from the graveyard. And then, as well, he, it's not a once per turn effect, but you can drop him from your hand to increase one of your Invoked Fusion Monsters by a thousand, which is really nuts because it's not a once per turn, so you can really just go ahead and boost your monster up, if, especially if it's Perfect Trio out on the board and your opponent has enough monsters to have your Purgatrio bounced up to about 3,000 or so. You can just drop both an Alistair, make your Purgatrio go from 30, like 3,000 to 4k or even 5k if you have both an Alistair's in your hand off of for some reason. Um, but yeah, it's just nuts that it's not a once per turn. Um, for other, for the last of our hand traps, um, Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. Um, I was running effect veilers at a playset in this deck, but for me, I think I was running way too trap hand trap heavy, and um, I really thought about it. And for me, I know that effect veiler is probably one of the better hand traps, other minus the actual ghost sister hand traps. But 
on for this I thought that having a monster get its effect but not being on the board is a lot better for certain decks that you play against rather than just effect failuring them because they'll still have that monster on the board to go off to do stuff but if you pop their monster yeah they're gonna get their effect with it but at least you're getting rid of the problem especially with like Salaman Grades um, or even Orcus in that for that case like hit their mermaid with Ghost Ogre yeah you're gonna get the monster out and pay the cost but you're not gonna have two monsters on the field to do things um, Another, so, on to the, like, the next set of my cards, uh, I'm running two copies of Draconet in my deck as well, um, for this, it's because of my extra deck, I am running, uh, a copy of the, what is your name, the, uh, Ib, the World Chalice Justicar, um, for her, it's just because, like, when this card's normal summon, you can, uh, special summon a one level two or lower normal monster from your hand or deck in defense position, so, um, I'll get to the normal monster that I do have in this deck for Draconet to hit, but um, I run two copies of this card. Uh, I was thinking about bumming it up to three just because I don't see it all that often, but then I realized this isn't a pure Mech Knight build, so I'm not really depending on Draconet to use its effect or what's in my extra deck. I'm just more depending off of the Invoked Engine, so this is just another card to help me speed into stuff. Uh, for the one ofs I run one Yellow Star one indigo eclipse, one red moon, and that's for the one of the mech knights, and I also run one copy of crown by the world chalice. Um, for yeah, I don't, these are the one of's, um, I, I would like to run a second copy of eclipse, but I would, if I run another eclipse, I'd probably drop a, um, I'd probably just drop my Draco net to one or something else in the spell and trap or the spell and trap parts. But I, at this point, I'm gonna test it out and see how the one ofs of these work so far. But like for me so far, the um, purple or not purple, but the indigo eclipse has been working pretty well in my build at one. Same thing with red moon. Red moon's really nice because, well, um, it's just you can banish a. Mech Knight monster from your graveyard and target one of the cards in the one monster in this card's column that it points to and destroy it. Uh, Yellow Star has a similar effect where you can banish a Mech Knight monster from your graveyard, but it destroys a spell and trap in the zone it points to. And uh, Indigo Eclipse is just your chess piece card. It uh, you can target one of your Mech Knight monsters and move it from a zone to another zone. You can just move, rearrange your stuff around and help out your board. Now, my obviously as you can see. Crown by the World Chalice is my normal monster for the effect of Draconet, just because that whenever I have this, if I want to go ahead and go into my Synchro play for Ib, uh, she can turn one of my normal monsters into a, synch a tuner monster, so I can Synchro off into them. Um, but that's the uh, lineup for the monsters. We're going to go ahead and hop into our uh, spells here in a second. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and hop right into the spells and traps of my um, deck. Uh, I run three copies of Mind Control for this build. Um, this this really helped out today with my um, Orcus matchups, you know, uh, with the fact that I can just play this, take one of your monsters and use it for Link Fodder or for my build. So, like, especially going against the um, Orcus matchup, um, if I, I, I had, like, already a Link 3 on the board and... I stole a monster from the extra deck and then went into like Mech Knight Crusader Avermax to really just punch in for games. But yeah, like, it's really nuts. Like, this card's just so good. Um, I run two copies of Magical Meltdown. Um, since it is invoked, I would like to see this card in my hand as soon as I can um, so I can get my plays off. Um, with Magical Meltdown, whenever you activate this card, you can add a Alistair the Invoker from your deck to your hand, and um, your fusions cannot be negated by card effects as long as this card is on the field. Um, but, yeah, like I said, um, this card is a great car great field card, especially for the Alistair and Invoked Engine. Uh, next up, I'm running two copies of in um, Invocation. Uh, this card right here... Uh, it's, it's really nice. Uh, you can fusion summon monsters from your extra deck using monsters from your hand as fusion material. Um, if you use this for an invoke engine, uh, you can just 
banish your Alistair from the field or from your graveyard. Uh, I only run two copies of it just because of the simple fact that I can recur this from my graveyard off of its own effect. So like any more copies I think for the way I have my deck built would brick me out and it would just be kind of dead. So like two is perfect for me but like depending on how you want to build your deck you could run three but like I said you're going to always end up seeing this card no matter what. Either it being brought back by its effect or being searched out from Alistair the Invoker of Madness. But it's all you know player preference so up to you. Um, uh, next up I run two copies of Instant Fusion. Uh, this I did have this card at three but I ended up dropping it down to two after I dropped one of my Instant Fusion targets being uh, El Shadal Winda. Um, for me I think that again it's the same it's the same like situation with Invocation. Um, it would be kind of a brick card especially since I only have two targets for my fusions. I mean yeah if one gets negated uh, yeah it's kind of bad but like you don't, the only time you're going to know that you're going to need the instant fusion is if you don't have any anything else in your hand to use. So like, by the by, like turn two, turn three, you shouldn't even have to worry about instant fusion being a thing. So it getting negated and running you at two for this, it's not that bad. I think three's kind of just over it. Um, two copies of Call by the Grave. Um, no, there's really not really much that I can say about this. No, like no explanations really needed for it. Um, this card is just great for any deck, uh, just stopping hand traps, uh, disrupting just about anything. Um, I run two copies of Terraforming. Uh, this card, again, as I said earlier, I want to use this card to get my Magical Meltdown to my hand as quickly as I can so I can get my, Alist my Invoked plays going off. Um, so, obviously, I can only run it at a maximum of two, but yeah, there's two copies of Terraforming to get my Field Spell to my hand as soon as I can. Um, I run two copies of Twin Twister just because um, back row is kind of shit, especially with this deck. I need, I, I mean, uh, once I get my Mech Knights out on the board, I really don't need the back row. But like, it's always nice to have back row disruption. Um, I might end up later on deciding to side this card out for something else, probably another set of World Legacy cards, just so I can have um, more room in my deck to have grow space or like more spells or traps for the World Legacies. Um, but we'll just see how that works out. Um, two copies of World Legacy Memories. Um, with this card, I can special summon Mech Knight monsters from my hand or deck in defense position, but they return to my hand during the end phase. And for the rest of the turn after this activation, I can't special summon anything but Mech Knight monsters. And I can only activate this card once per turn. Now, this card, again, it, well, not again, but this card for me, uh, earlier today with one of my matchups, uh, I had, um, it was nice because I was able to get out a Mech Knight monster, go into my Morning Star, use my Morning Star's effect to drop something. Um, I had another monster that I special summoned and I used Mech Knight Morning Star, link summon that off and went into Spectrum Supreme, which I was able to just start using Spectrum Supreme to start sw to uh, swing directly into things. Um, this card really just helps me pop off my plays really, really good. Um, I thought about running at three, but I don't have that many Mech Knight monsters in my deck. Um, for the one ofs, I run. Uh, one copy of Book of Law, one copy of World Legacy Key, and one copy of Super Polymerization. Um, I do know that this card is back up to two, but I don't have the means of acquiring a second copy as of right now, so yeah, it's I just run the one copy of this, but like it, this card's busted. It's it's just a great card. Um, World Legacy Key, um, you can use this card to recur one of your Banished Mech Knight monsters, and um, or World Legacy cards and add it to your hand and then you can negate any of, of your opponent's um, trap effects that activates in the same column as the Mech Knight monster that you control. Um, it's really good. Uh, this really goes hand in hand with the other trap with the trap card uh, World Legacy Whispers because um, this one you know you can target when you activate this you can target one of your level 5 or higher monsters in the field and gains a thousand attack and defense until the end of this turn and you can negate any spell or trap effects that or spell effects that activate in the same column as mech knight monsters that you control so both of these cards both you know this gives attack this recurs your banished cards but it negates the traps this one negates your spells so like it's really good so yeah obviously i only run one copy of this i'm running a 42 card deck and then book of law just because like i would um prefer to just have this card as a one of in my deck just because if I see it too many times I'm probably going to end up bricking because yeah you don't want to see this card. Um, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to move on into our uh, 
the extra deck. Um, I run, starting it off, I'll go. I'll just go with the fusion invoked engine. Um, I run double copy of invoked Mechaba. Um, it's probably one of my one of my favorite cards. Uh, it's all right at uh, 2,500. Um, you can. Uh, it's not. A, it's a soft once per turn. So if you summon another one, you can use its effect again. Um, so pretty much whenever it's a once per turn when a spell or trap or monster effect is activated you can um, send the same type of card you know monster spell or trap in your hand to the graveyard to negate the activation and then it banishes so like if you bring out a double mechaba and you have like the means to do it and they go ahead and activate like a monster effect you know spell negate it and then they go ahead and try to activate like another like a spell spell negate it like it, it's just it's great at the fact that it's a, you know a soft once per turn um, then I run uh, one copy of Invoked Raijin. Uh, it's also my instant tar my um, instant fusion target. I don't really ever have wind monsters or go against decks that have wind monsters that I can use to actually bring Raijin out. But like right before I do anything else, I can just activate Raijin's effect during the player's turn. I can target a face-up monster my on the field and it change it to face down defense position. So it's just like, okay, neat. So like, Raijin, flip your monster face down and then use Raijin and link off into something else, probably like Alistair the Invoker. Um, and then probably my other favorite card of the Invoked, uh, Purgatrio, the fact the, the fact that like, you know, he, he gets 200 attack for each card my opponent controls and then like he also does piercing damage when he attacks a defense position monster. It's just insane. And like with the Salamangrate matchup, whenever I go into it and use like their graveyard, I'm always gonna go after that Bailing, so like they don't have that protection to just save their stuff. So like, it's it, it's pretty good. Um, I run a, cop a copy of Thousand Eye Restrict. Uh, it's another instant fusion target, but like this card, I don't really use it for its effects. I kind of just use it to bring it out off of instant fusion if I don't have any other option. But um, it's just a name in the extra deck. Uh, I don't really ever use its effect. Uh, last time I tried using its effect, I've got Ash, or not Ash, but I got uh, Roar during a Salamangrate matchup. Um, for my Super Poly targets, I run a Starving Venom Fusion Dragon just to break those boards of Orcus, and then um, World Chalice Guard Dragon Almerduk. Um, it's this guy. I, is, I don't. I don't think he gets enough credit for what he is, but like you know, he takes three Link monsters. So like, there's decks out there, and you use Super Poly. To just what you know, clear your opponent's board of the link monsters is really nice. But like he has this other effect that says um, uh, this card can attack all your monsters, all monsters your opponent controls once each, and then when an attack is declared involving this card and an opponent's linked monster, you can banish a link monster with the same link rating as that monster from your field or graveyard. Destroy that opponent's monster, and if you do, inflict damage to your opponent equal to its original attack. So not only does he have an attack ability to just attack all your opponent's monsters once each. He also has the ability to just say, hey, when I attack a Link monster on your opponent's side of the board, I'm just going to banish one from my field or my graveyard at the same Link rating, and you're going to take, you're going to get that monster destroyed, and not only is it going to get destroyed, you're going to take that effect, you're going to take that attack, that original attack to your life points. And like, to me, that's just really, really good. It's just, I think it's super, I think it's just super, overlooked and it's like underrated right now but i'm sure this card will end up blowing up in people's like extra deck so like you know keep your eye out like i would run this card if you run super poly just for those decks and like even if you don't want to main deck it in your side deck or your extra deck you can just always side deck it and wait until you know what you're going up against but still i personally think this card is just great um for uh, my synchro i run if the world chalice justice here um, whenever she, you can use one of a normal monster to turn into a tuner to make for your synchro plays, but whenever she synchro summoned, you can add a world legacy card from your deck to your hand. And that was like, like for me, whenever I synchro summon her, the first cards I ever think about pulling into my hand is like um, world legacy memory or world legacy key or world legacy whispers, just to get those cards to my hand. Um, I'm sure that if there's a bunch of other cards that I could pull, like you could pull really any of the helpful world legacy cards, like world legacy um, succession to your hand. Um, her other effect is though, like if you synchro, if the synchro summon card is sent from the field to graveyard, you can special summon a world chalice monster from your deck or graveyard, except the world chalice justice seer. So like, you can bring back your uh, crown by the world chalice or like any of your other.
part depending on how you build it. Like it's not just meant for Mac Knights. I just threw it in here because I thought it was a great card and it helps out with my plays. Um, and then we run uh, for our links. We do. Um, we got one copy of Alistair the Invoker of Madness. Um, since, like I said, this is the invoked engine. Um, with Herm, uh, you got the ability to uh, add a fusion, or not add a fusion, but anytime a fusion monster is summoned to this to the field while you control this, you can discard a card and either add uh, the Book of Law or Invocation from your deck to your hand, um, which is really nice because, like, if you bring that Invocation back from your graveyard to the deck and you get a fusion summon monster here, and you already have Book of Law in hand, you can just drop a card and add that invocation to your hand and just go off again and do another fusion. So that way you have your link zones opened up for you. Um, then for like the other one, uh, I run a co one copy of Morningstar in the deck, or in the extra deck. Um, <clears throat> whenever he's link summoned, you can target, or you can discard a Mech Knight monster or a World Legacy card and add a World Legacy card from your deck to your hand. And you can only use this effect of Mech Knight of the Morning Star once per turn. And then if a Mech Knight monster battles a monster in a different column other than this, your monster cannot be destroyed by battle. And you take no battle damage from that battle. But like, I would just use his discard ability again to search like off my other Mech Knights. If I need a Mech Knight that I don't have in my hand, I'll just discard one of my you know, World Legacy cards that I have, add it to my hand, and then just special summon it and go right into um, my Spectrum Supreme, which is like the big boy here. Um, speaking of which, uh, Spectrum Supreme, this guy's pretty good, um, you know, whenever he's in a column with no other monsters, he can attack directly, and he's a 3k body, and he can't be targeted, um, it can't be destroyed by card effects, and you can't target it with card effects, but it doesn't prevent it from being destroyed by battle, but still, the, the ability to be able to just attack over all of your opponent's monsters as long as there's nothing in this board and just do 3k damage direct is just nuts. I wouldn't say it's broken because it's that just be uh, that would be stupid. Um, I run a copy of World Gears of Theological. Um, this card takes three level five or higher monsters. Um, now if you want to get a second effect his first effect off where you if you use monsters with different uh, types and attributes to destroy everything on the, your opponent's board uh, it's probably best to find a different build for it. Um, I don't really go into them all that often but because I don't ever keep 3 level 5 or higher monsters on my board and I don't really have any different types or attributes because they're all mainly dark and light. So there's that. Um, so I might end up cutting them for something else. Um, then I run a copy of uh, Ningirsu, the World Chalice Warrior. Um, if this card is linked summon, you can draw cards equal to the number of World Chalice monsters this card points to. And you can only use this effect of um, Ningirsu the World Chalice Warrior once per turn. Once per turn, you can send one card from each player's field to the graveyard. If this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can special summon one World Chalice monster from your hand. Um, this is just another name in there. Uh, I've never actually had an opportunity of going into him, but I'd probably just use him for his attack stats. I wouldn't use him for his other effects just because they're eh. I don't have that many World Chalice monsters in my deck to even use as a vector target. Um, and then uh, the last two cards in my extra deck, I run one copy of Borlo Dragon. Um, it's just kind of, you know, I'm sure everybody knows what Borlo does by now, so I'm not really going to sit here and explain it. But I will talk about my boy Mech Knight Crusadia Avramax. This guy is literally the best card out from Dark Neostorm right now. Um, thank you Konami for printing this amazing card. Um, I don't know what I would like. This card just helps out with so much. Um, it can't be targeted for attacks. It can't be targeted with card effects. So like... This, uh, well, you can't target other monsters for attacks. This is the only one that can get targeted. So, like, all your other monsters on the board are safe as long as he's on the board. And then he's a built and honest. Like, he has a quick effect where he gains the attack of a uh, monster that is attacking this. So, like, he gains that attack during the damage step. So, like, that's more damage on your opponent. But if he leaves the field, he's also a built-in compulsory evacuation device. Like, he... It's just... It bounces it right back to the deck. Like, this card just makes everything 
and saying like people thought that Dengirsu was good out of the out of the you know, storm. Like don't get me wrong, like I'm an Orcus player myself, and I think that Dengirsu is just like really good. But like comparing Mech Knight Crusadia Avermax to Dengirsu would be like comparing you know um, Nickelback to Slipknot. Like yeah, they're both good in their own aspects, but like obviously this boy's so much better. Like. He has the better effects and better attack stats. Like, yeah, I'm always going to choose this guy. But, you know, I'm not no hate on Orcus players because, again, I'm one of the Orcus players. But, like, you know, it's, it's just great. Um, but that's everything I got for you guys today. So um, I'd like to give a shout out to uh, my buddy Matt for letting me use his studio to record these videos to bring you guys these uh, spicy, spicy deck profiles that I got. Um, if you guys would give him his page a like, I'll leave his stuff down in the link description in my description below. Um, if you like what you see here, give my page a like, uh, subscribe, and hit that notification bell if you want to be one of the first people to see my videos when I upload them. Um, but yeah, so I'll be catching you guys later.